What's your one biggest regret? The one thing you wish you'd done that you never did? That question was posed to me as I was at a New Year's party ringing in 2015. I was reconnecting with a young lady I knew from college, and as she asked the question, I already knew the answer. I regret never going to Spain. I promised myself that I would become fluent in Spanish, that I would travel the world, experience new cultures. I never did it, and I regret it. Her next question changed the course of my life forever. What's stopping you? I didn't have a good answer for that. I thought that I did. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy to travel the world and learn a new language? Well, my career. Are you going to stop being a lawyer just because you relocate? Well, what about my finances? Have you even looked to see if you can make it work? Have you even tried? The truth was, I hadn't tried. I had given up on my dream, resigned myself to never going to Spain, to staying in the course and playing it safe. That conversation planted a seed in me. Now, I remember very little else from that New Year's party, as, <laughs> as tends to happen at New Year's parties. But that conversation planted a seed that continued to grow for weeks after. And indeed, a few weeks later, I was sitting in a classroom learning about life entrepreneurship. Life entrepreneurship is this concept that the things that we want are indeed attainable. One must simply formulate a plan and set it to action. Investing in ourselves and reaping the rewards. I found myself being challenged once again to take what I want and make it a reality. So I decided right then and there that I was going to see if I could make it happen. Not that I would necessarily go. Just could I make it work? Could I move to Spain without tanking my career, without going into debt, without losing all that I'd worked for? It wasn't easy. I spent the next three months trying to find a job that would allow me to live and work in Europe. As it turns out, people don't really want an American coming to take a Spaniard's job. Sound familiar? <laughs> law was out of the question. To practice law in another country would require further study, which would require further debt. That was outside my plan. I had to think of something that I could market um, that was unique to me, or at least to my situation. And even if I found a job, what were people going to think about me? What were my colleagues in the bar, whom I see in court every day, going to think about me leaving the law to move to Europe? I decided that the sheer recklessness of my plan necessitated that I keep it to myself. I don't know if y'all know this, but lawyers tend to be a bit judgmental. <laughs> Throughout the process, I was praying for peace about my decision and for an opportunity to come available. And after hearing no after no after no from all these different companies, I started to believe that perhaps that was my answer. Perhaps I just wasn't meant to go. But then I'm out one night and I randomly strike up a conversation with a young med student. And I just, for whatever reason, I opened up to her and I told her what I was planning and the struggle I was having to find a job. She says, wait, really? Because I got a friend who just got a job in Madrid. There's a program for American teachers. You should apply. Just like that, I made the connection that eventually led to a job and a visa in Spain, proving once again that incorporating others in your goals is the surest way to success. So now I had a job covered for when I get there, but I still had to get across the pond. It's a very expensive flight, and it's a very expensive visa process. So I took a second job. I would get to the courthouse at 8.30, I'd work until about 5.30, then I'd swap out my suit, don an apron, and sling barbecue at a local restaurant. Even as things were, sh were shaping up, I still wasn't sure that I was in the right headspace to take the plunge. It wasn't until June, as I was at a wedding for a high school buddy of mine, that two things changed my view. The first was that, as part of his bachelor celebration, he convinced us to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> it seemed like a great idea up until about 14,000 feet when the door is open and the instructor is looking at me like, that's you buddy, let's go. <laughs> Terrified. Terrified. But 
as I touched the ground, still alive, I realized that I could have never known how fun, how exhilarating, how rewarding of an experience that could be until I tried it, until I took the plunge. Later that evening, I was at the rehearsal dinner, and I found myself speaking with the groom's mother, a woman with whom I had not spoken since high school. I opened up to her, and I told her what I was planning, my doubts about whether it was the right thing for my career. She says, Jared, you have to go. You have no idea how much this experience will change you, how much you'll grow. You'll be a better American for having seen a different viewpoint. You'll be a better lawyer for having new experience. You'll be a better man for having taken the risk. You have to go. And as I spoke to this woman for the first time in over a decade, all the fear, the anxiety, the self-doubt that I've been experiencing over the past six months washed away to be replaced by the peace that I've been praying for all along. I decided that night that no matter what happens, I'm going. But there still remained one final obstacle. I had to tell my boss that I'd be resigning my post. Now, my boss at the time was the epitome of a professional. She had worked her way up from being a line ADA, which I was, into being the district attorney of the Augusta Judicial Circuit. Highly respected and well regarded as the next in line to be a superior court judge. In my mind, she had everything. She was everything. So walking into her office to tell her that I'd be quitting the law to go gallivant in Spain was no easy task. I sat down across from her. And I looked in her eyes, expecting to see disappointment, frustration, perhaps even pity at this young kid throwing away his career. What I never expected to see was joy, pride, validation. She told me how she too wanted to do something just like this, how she had considered moving away, but how she stayed the course and focused on her career. And now, at the apex of an outstanding legal practice, part of her still wished she had. That's when I realized that everyone has something that they're still waiting to do, some risk they still haven't taken. For me, it was language skill and traveling the world, but for others, it could be any number of things. A month later, I boarded a plane. Having never been out of the United States before, not speaking the language, and not knowing a soul. For me, the epitome of risk taking. That trip lasted two years. The best, most important two years of my life. The ways that I grew, the ways that I changed, the ways that I now view the world, all are a product of the risk that I took. I think back to New Year's Eve. If that young lady had asked me a different question, if instead she had asked, where do you hope to see yourself in five years? Truth is, my answer to that question would have been dangerously close to exactly where I am right now. Taking the risk didn't ruin my career. It reshaped it. It didn't stop me from achieving my goals. It emboldened me and empowered me to take more risks on this journey to attain what I want out of life. I would have never had the confidence to open my own law firm or to build my practice the way I have. I wouldn't even be able to speak with the very clients of mine who don't know English. Taking the risk didn't ruin me. It remade me. So what's the one thing you never did that you've always wanted to? The one risk you were too afraid to take? Perhaps it's time to write that book. It may wind up on the bestsellers list. Perhaps it's time to start that business you dreamt up decades ago. You may finally find fulfillment in your work. Perhaps it's time to tell that special someone how you really feel about them. It may just change both of your lives forever. When we begin to see the reward that lies out there for those who take the risk, we realize that the biggest risk, the greatest folly, is in taking no risk at all. So what's stopping you? What's stopping you? What's stopping you?